Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning at Our Savior Lutheran Church in beautiful Nokomis, Florida. Welcome to any visitors we might have this morning, our regular members, and of course, I can't forget those of us joining us in YouTube land. It's, it's good to see that we typically have 40 to 50 people tune in to our YouTube channel and watch this service every Sunday, so it's it's. It makes me feel good that even though we're a little light for people inside here, we still have another 40, 50 people that are joining us on YouTube. So thank you to all of you. Yesterday was a beautiful day for our pet blessing. Pastor Donna welcomed and blessed eight dogs, one cat, and one rabbit. She also blessed via pictures or names another 26 animals, including goats, horses, a parrot, dogs, cats, Pictures are on the board in the hallway in case you're interested. It was a wonderful day. We think we brightened up a lot of people's lives by blessing their pets. And uh, uh, it would, thank you, Pastor Donna, for doing that. Blessing. Appreciate it. Reminder that Reformation Sunday potluck dinner is Sunday, October the 27th. Following our service, there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. So please plan on attending and please plan on signing the sign-up sheet as to what you plan to bring. Don't forget our fabulous fall sale is Saturday, November the 2nd, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will need helpers the Thursday and Friday before to help us set up the tables and help us put things in order so that we can make this sale a big success. Uh, more information is in the Messenger, so please read the article in the Messenger. Bible study continues every Thursday at noon. We are presently on Exodus chapter 19. Uh, you can also watch the classes on our YouTube channel, as there are other things on our YouTube channel, including lessons in Isaiah. Pastor presently has four lessons in Isaiah posted on our YouTube channel for you to view if you're interested. Our new messenger is out. Hopefully you got a copy of it. If not, there's a copy in the narthex. Uh, you also find an article in there from the Synod telling how we can support congregations and communities who were so badly impacted by Hurricane Helene. So please take a look at that and see what you can do to help those people out. Also, friendly reminder, a listing of prayer concerns and event dates are in the back of your bulletin. So please take a copy home with you so that you will have this information to pray for those that are so much in need. Flowers today were given by Priscilla Burden as a happy birthday to Josie from Granny. Aww. So thank you, Priscilla. Any other announcements? One more thing, stay safe this week, please. Oh, cell phones, I forget cell phones? My gracious, I mention that every Sunday. <laughs> Zip your cell phones, please. Zip it.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, you loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from the second chapter of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man <coughs> said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 8. Please respond in the words in the bold print. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is from the first and second chapters of Hebrews. 
Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, by the prophets, but in those last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through him whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees came to test Jesus and they asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they no, are, no longer are two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing their children to him in order that he may touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and bless them. The Gospel of the Lord. And please be seated and pray with me. Heavenly Father, help me to be your child today. Help me to dream big and to forget fear and to laugh out loud. Help me to be the best and to believe the best of all those around me. Amen. Well, good morning to all of you here today and to all of you watching online. Welcome to worship on this, the 20th Sunday after the Pentecost. 
And thanks to everyone who helped and who was blessed and who blessed us by bringing your pets to our pergola was such a nice blessing day. However, we did not receive many donations of pet food for the local pet shelters. So we're going to leave the donation bin in the Narthex for the next two weeks. So please, let's try to fill it so we can take it. Now, right now, until October the 12th, we are smack dab in the middle of a period of time that is known as the Days of Awe. And this time of this year, we're asked by God to consider where we are spiritually. So we're asked to spend some time in self-examination, do a sort of spiritual checkup from the neck up, right? Now, I don't know about you, but that is not my favorite thing to do, checking my spiritual progress. During this year, have I grown closer to you, Lord? Or have I turned away from you this past year? Or even worse, I'm probably right where I was last year, during the days of awe. I haven't gotten any worse, but chances are I don't think I've gotten any better either. Lord, have mercy on me. Now, Rabbi Schmerling gave some good advice when it comes to figuring out your progress on the spiritual growth chart. During the days of awe, we know God transforms all his children through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know the power of the Holy Spirit. So instead of asking ourselves what we did wrong this past year, let's think about what we did right. Let's think about us the way God thinks about us. We are made in the image of God, and we know God is good, and so are we. So when we think about doing better this year, we should think, God, you filled us with your love. So inside of us, we have so much potential for so much good. And that is the behavior that we should repent. Why didn't I live up to that potential that you placed inside of me? So during these days of awe, we can do one of two things. We can tell ourselves, we're a mess and we need to do better. Or we can hear Jesus say, you are amazing. You are so filled with God's love. Now get up and go out and live up to that. Live like that. And we need to be reminded every day we were not born to feel shame. We were born to reclaim our greatness. So let's not feel badly about who we have been. Let's get excited about who we can become with the help of the Son and the Spirit. And that's the first thing that we read today in our lectionary from Genesis, all about God's creation. So glorious. Everything that God creates, God himself declares good except for one little thing. When God sees that man is living alone, God says, not good. Not good for man to live alone. So in this text that we just heard, first, God becomes an anesthesiologist, and then a surgeon, and then God surgically creates an Isha from an Ish. So how does God do that? Well, first, God places the ish in a deep sleep, and then God removes a rib from the ish. And from that, God creates the isha, and they become one flesh. And God was also a very good psychiatrist, because he has multiple degrees. God knows us and loves us, and God knows that it's not good for anyone to be alone. Sociopaths live alone, but not ideal, right? God creates us to be together. And David sings that in the psalm today. 
and we should all sing along with David because this is such a lovely psalm. David looks at creation, so he looks up at the moon and the stars and the angels, and then David looks at us, and David asks God, why do you love us so much? And we ask that every Sunday during our confession at the start of our service, God, you love us even when we are dead to sin. God, you still love us and forgive us. And that's why we should sing this psalm every day. Also, this psalm teaches us what God wants us to remember. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you are not worth everything. God created you to be one of his children with an eternal future with him in heaven. God loves you so much he promises to be with you. Now have you ever felt unsure of your value? Have you ever said, oh what good am I? Well here's the answer to that question. It's in the Word of God. And that's why we need the Word of God. It's the only way we can get back to where we need to be, which is right next to the God who loves us. And that's what we heard today in the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now, we haven't spent much time with this letter. And we don't know exactly who wrote the letter. It's anonymous. Maybe Paul, maybe Barnabas. And we don't know when this letter was written, and we don't know who was reading this letter, so we don't know a lot about this letter. So what do we know? Well, we know that whoever wrote this letter knew the 12 disciples, and we, knew, we know now that they knew the Torah. And just so you know, you could study Torah with us every Thursday right here at noon. We would love to welcome you to our class. Um, you could join us in person or online, but sorry, if you join us online, you're going to miss Priscilla's cookies, and they're amazing. So come, join us, and she always brings lots of extras. But now back to the book of the letter to Hebrews. This letter was probably written to a community of Jewish followers of Jesus. That's why it's called the book of uh, the letter to the Hebrews. They followed Jesus, and because of this, they suffered persecution and incarceration. They were imprisoned because of Jesus. So this is what this letter is teaching, and it really is wonderful, extraordinary. Jesus is the revelation of God. This is God's word sent through his son. So this is how God reveals himself to us. God is speaking to us through Jesus. So we better listen. Now in the very first verse of the letter, the writer tells us Jesus is here with us. And doesn't this writer sound just like David? He marvels at how much God loves us. God is so sure of us that he sends his only son to us. So this radiance of God becomes one of us. Now this reading from the letter to the Hebrews is based on Deuteronomy chapter 33, which is a speech given by Moses right before he died. Moses tells the people, you are saved by God. And that is good news. But here in Hebrews, we hear even better news, amazing news, full of God's goodness and grace. We hear that Jesus is higher than all the things that we just read about in Deuteronomy. He's higher than all the angels and higher than Moses and his brother Aaron and higher than all the priests. Jesus is higher than all of them. And yet Jesus gives up all that glory to become one of us. The Son of God comes to us so that we can become sons and daughters of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is the amazing grace found in the Word of God. But we don't always listen to it, do we? 
But honestly, that's still part of the good news. Even though we don't always listen, especially when we're frightened or we're angry, we don't listen and we don't follow Jesus. We stay quiet when we should speak out. And just so you know, we're not called quiet Lutherans by mistake. We can be quiet, too quiet. But that's also good news, that no matter what we do, Jesus never ignores us. Jesus always hears us. And that's the message we heard in our reading today from Mark, who is teaching and preaching to a community who's also in peril, persecution after persecution, all because they followed Jesus. So Mark is leading a community being imprisoned, even executed, because of their beliefs. So they're in crisis. They have big, big problems. So we have to stop and think about this. Why is this chapter here in Mark's Gospel? Why does Mark choose this time to teach a lesson about divorce and adultery to his community? Why do you think Mark sticks this lesson here, right here in his Gospel, when we are getting ready to follow Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross? And what does Mark do? Mark sticks in divorce and adultery if you do get divorced. How does this lesson, Mark, help us follow our Lord and Savior to the cross? Well, this reading today is not about divorce. It's not about adultery. It's about the community then and our community today. A community filled with the broken and the frightened and the very vulnerable who have no idea what will happen to them because they love Jesus. So no, Jesus is not issuing divorce decrees and Jesus is not giving child rearing advice. Jesus is not commenting at all on the relationships between parents and children. Jesus is teaching about the kingdom and how we should receive the kingdom that he has come to offer us. Mark says that Jesus says, receive the kingdom with humility and a complete lack of pretension. Jesus reminds us once again, we are all children of God. And Jesus wants to be sure that we know that and we believe that. Now, we know every child is different, right? Some are little angels, just like all of us here today. Other kids, not so much. So maybe what Mark is teaching here is who counts in the kingdom and who doesn't. So this text is not about doing certain things or not doing certain things. In fact, it's not about doing at all. It's about being, being fit for the kingdom. And what does Jesus say? Whoever does not receive the kingdom as a little child will never enter it. So be, be a child of God. That's how you were created. That's why God loves you. And that is the glorious gift of grace that God sends to us every day. You are my children and I love you. So it's not about divorce. It's about love, the love of God for his children. And we're expected to receive the kingdom like a little child. And you know, when a little child sees something he wants, he'll grab onto it and hold onto it and tell everyone who gets too close, this is mine, mine. How many times have we heard that, parents, right? This is mine. Well, that's exactly what Jesus wants to hear from us. This is mine. The kingdom is mine, and we need to depend on it and nothing else. We have to completely depend on God and his love and his word. Everything we have comes from God. So it's not about how hard we work, not about how much we do, we have to put all our trust in God alone. We have to believe that the only way to come into the kingdom is to be carried in, 
in the loving arms of the Father. What a lovely image. We have to know that and believe that, and we have to accept that. We have to understand how loved we are, and we have to know how far Jesus will go to welcome us into the kingdom. We know that Jesus will go all the way to the cross. So now, how far will you go to be with Jesus? Will you love yourself the way Jesus loves you? And will you love all the children of the world the way Jesus loves all his children? And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church the world, and the whole creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. God of grace, creator of every creature on earth, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of cattle, birds of the air, animals of the field, and those who share our homes. Reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. God of grace, sovereign God, we give thanks that you are mindful and benevolent to even us mere mortals. Accompany us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations. Endow leaders with minds for justice and hearts for compassion. God of grace. Restoring Lord. 
grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering. And we pray for all those listed here in our bulletin and in our messenger and all those we hold in our hearts and those we now name aloud in your presence. Lord, work through medical professionals to diagnose, ease pain, and give life to all who seek their wisdom and experience. God of grace, unifying God, humans were created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace, God of resurrection, you prepare a place in the kingdom through Christ's death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet. God of grace, into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. God's peace. So do I get an extra kick cookie on Thursday? Just kidding. She hates it when I say her name. God's peace be with you. But they're the best cookies ever. God's peace be with you. And God's peace. Oh, you had a little something? God's peace. I gotta have this room. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God loves you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. You look so nice. All the time. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace, darling. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. 
Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good.
Please stand as you're able, and let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, and water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.